<clears throat> My first morning in rehab was interesting, to say the least. I didn't sleep a wink the whole night because when I was using opiates, I obviously destroyed a lot of natural chemicals in my brain, one of which helps you sleep. So when I took away my synthetic opiates and became clean, my brain didn't function normally. So I didn't sleep pretty much for the first four days I was in, in rehab. So that first morning, I remember laying in bed, facing out the window to Times Square. I watched the bright lights in Times Square all night just stared out the window. The clock seemed like it was going backwards. It was it was taking forever for the morning to come. And it was a very interesting night because I was thinking a lot about what I had done during my drug abuse and my addiction and all the terrible things I did to people. And it was almost like karma. Not being able to sleep. Because if anyone's ever not been able to sleep, they know that you start getting manic. And I was. I was manic. I, all I wanted to do was sleep. I knew I had a big day ahead of me. It was my first morning in rehab. And I was nervous. So all these thoughts were going around in my head. So I just kept telling myself, you know, this is just payback, dude. I'm like, all the terrible things you did, you're going to have to pay for. Every day. So just keep your chin up. Pretty much keep your face up taking in the chin. Like getting punched in the face. Because I deserved it. 100%. So that first morning, 5.30 finally rolled around and my roommate Frank's alarm went off. And each one of us had lockers. And they had two folding doors, right? So I remember waking up and I only knew this man for about 10 hours. Okay, so keep that in mind. And I'm facing my, my locker and it was very barren because I didn't have any clothes. I didn't have really much of anything. I just had the toiletries they gave me, which were donations. So I had a toothbrush, toothpaste, some liquid soap in a bag, and uh, a razor. Sorry. So I'm facing the, the, the locker, and I'm, I'm listening to the music he has bumping at 5.30 in the morning. And it was digital underground. Like, you know, come on, do the Humpty Hump. And he always listened to old school hip hop every morning and I'm facing the locker and I'm kind of enclosed in the locker because it's kind of big and the doors are hiding me and I hear this high pitched voice singing along with Digital Underground and it's Frank now Frank is a giant Puerto Rican ex-pimp crack user okay he's an ex-crackhead me and him Best buddies, but imagine this giant guy, muscular, not fat, muscular, singing this high-pitched voice singing Digital Underground. And I, I close one of the, the sides of the locker, and I'm looking, and I see Frank, and you know, tidy whitey underwears? But they were purple. And that's all he had on, and he was facing his locker, dancing and singing D Digital Underground. Now... Since I only knew him for 10 hours, and we had a conversation the night before, and he got to know me a little bit, I felt kind of comfortable with him, but not comfortable enough to, to start laughing like I wanted to. Like, it just, it brought joy to me to see a grown, tough man dancing in his purple underwear to Digital Underground, singing in a high-pitched voice, okay? So that was my first morning, and... It made a lot of things clear, like what kind of guy Frank was. I mean, he didn't give a shit what you thought about him. He was tough, but he had a big, big heart, right? So, I just closed the locker so you couldn't see me, so I was hiding in there, and I'm smiling to myself. I'm like, you know what, just keep your head down and go to the bathroom. So I left the bedroom, and on each floor, there was community bathrooms, Okay, one bathroom per 40 guys in all the rooms. And each bathroom had three sinks, three mirrors, two stand-up urinals, and like I think it was six toilets, four, four or six toilets. And I remember standing there waiting to use a sink so I could brush my teeth and shave. And I waited for about 10 minutes, and there was guys all around me. Now, now 
keep in mind, I'm pretty much the only suburban kid here. Pretty much the only white guy on my floor. And the only guy that looks like me. Okay? These guys were all hard, hard dudes. And I, I look like I hadn't had a hard day in my life. You know what I mean? So I didn't really let my guard down. My guard was up the whole time. I didn't know what kind of situation I was in. And I was very nervous, to say the least. I When I was washing my face, I didn't even splash water on my face. That's how nervous I was. I just, I put water around my face just so I wouldn't have to close my eyes. So I can keep an eye on everybody. Even came down to the point where I had my razor in my hand ready to use as a weapon. What a razor is going to do to defend me isn't really logical, but I was willing to do anything to, to survive at that point because I wanted to live. And I didn't know what kind of guys these guys were. All I knew was Frank was my roommate. And Frank was probably the biggest and baddest dude in the whole whole place. So that I had that going for me. And I think that's why Felix hooked me up with him as a roommate because he knew that I needed that little bit of protection for myself, mentally. So thanks, Felix. So uh, I, I got done doing my thing in the bathroom, shaving and, and, and brushing my teeth, and I went back to the bedroom. And Frank was sitting on his, his bed, dressed, ready to go, and reading his Bible. Now, Frank wasn't always a religious man. Very obvious from the, the stories he told me about his past. But he found religion. That's what got him sober and clean. Me, personally, I, I, that's not my thing. But I don't judge anybody. So if that's what keeps him clean... Good for him, you know what I mean? So he loved his Bible, he was always reading it. And we hadn't even said any words to each other th this morning, and he looks up out of his Bible at me and he goes, How'd you sleep? With like a smirk on his face and giggles. Because he already knew the answer. He knew I didn't sleep a wink, right? Because he, he was there three and a half months prior, when he first got there. So I just laughed and I just said, y y I, didn't, I didn't sleep a wink, you know? I'm, I'm exhausted, blah, blah, blah. But I, st I had so much adrenaline going because I didn't know what my day was bringing me. And I asked him, I'm like, what's next on the agenda? What, what do we do? We go eat or whatever? And he's like, yeah, we go get breakfast. And he had this big smile come over his face, right? Like, he was like, like Christmas morning for him. And it didn't dawn on me, but later on it started to make sense. He told me that when he went into rehab, he was about 30 pounds lighter than he was when I first met him. And that's pretty, it's pretty normal for a drug addict to gain weight when they get clean. Especially someone that's addicted to say something like cocaine or crack or methamphetamines. And he gained 30 pounds. And he, he eventually told me that, like, you know, growing up, he didn't have food. Like, he had to fight for his meals. And when he got a full meal, it was very, a very rare occasion. And uh, I'm hearing this. I've never experienced that in my life. I mean, I grew up in a suburban home, middle class, never had to worry about food. And it started dawning on me that this guy was just happy to eat. You know what I mean? Like, real, real, had some real issues and some things to be depressed about. And he had a rough life. And it made me think at that moment, like, what the hell was I so depressed about that I had to use drugs? You know? But he started teaching me about myself in other ways that I normally would have been taught. And further down the road and through this story, you're going to see why I started using drugs. And there's more to the first day story, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys a little more in the, a video tomorrow. All right, so check out freefromhell.com, and check out the blog. Email me at ryan at freefromhell.com if you guys have any, any advice or anything for me. All right, you guys have a good day. I'll check you guys out tomorrow, all right? Bye.